what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed so you guys i have yet another quick little tiny little bitty life update if you follow me on instagram you already know what i'm about to say I have a new baby, Bella, and I will pick her up and show y'all her right now because she's sleeping right by my feet, but she is very fussy. Like, she gets to yapping like, ah, 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 and shaking her little head, and I'm like, girl, why do you have all this attitude? You know what's so funny? When I picked her up, I had on a black wig and a hat, and I had this on for the first couple hours she was in my home, but then when I got comfortable, you know, when mother had to wind down, I took off my wig and my hat and came down the hall, and sis was looking like, excuse me? Like, she would not allow me to pick her up. She was running from me. It's just me with my wig off. Like, why are you acting like this? The fact that you are running from me with my wig off is making me feel away. My like, grace, this how my ex felt? Like, she tried it, and then when I went to put this wig on, she tried to act funny all over again, and I'm like, girl, I'm not about to reintroduce myself. We are not going to do this every time I change hair. Because in my home, hair is an accessory. Blue has been just like very unengaging. She will yap at him. She will pounce at him. And he'll just be looking at her like, girl, relax. I'm about to butcher this last name. So let me just say that first. Manuel Viegas. I believe that's how you say the last name. But I'm not quite sure. He was born January 25th, 1943. Over in Seville, Spain. Making him an Aquarius. I feel like that is truly the sign that I do not say often. They can honestly say that it is rarely them that we talk about. His mother is just 24 years old at the time that she gives birth to him. But unfortunately, she passes away during childbirth his father was involved and in the picture but he was far more interested in his career and working than being a single parent granted he does attempt to raise his son on his own for several years but he was one of those parents that took his frustrations out on his child and so Manuel was raised in a very violent household now he does have an older sister so he is a single father of two kids he was also struggling financially and he just no longer wanted the burden of two children. So he goes to their maternal grandmother and asks her to take them in. She is not really in a better situation financially, but these are her daughter's children. Her daughter is no longer with her and she decides, you know what, I'm going to welcome them in and do my best. Despite the fact that, you know, I really don't have the money like that. Both children preferred to be in the household with her because she was much nicer than their father and they were just sick of him, child, just as much as he was sick of them. Now, unfortunately, that is only one of the obstacles that little Manuel is facing in his child life right now. He suffers from dyslexia and so it is very difficult for him to learn to read and write. He is extremely insecure about the fact that he cannot read or write and that he is struggling with his dyslexia, but that is not the only thing. Lil Manuel also had a little stuttering problem, so he is also very insecure about that. He wasn't really teased for this in school, but the other students and the staff all saw him as mentally impaired, and so they pretty much just ostracized him. Everybody ignored him, let him do his own thing, and treated him as though he just didn't even exist. This is pretty much the theme of his entire school career. He is just a lonely, quiet, different kid that's over there that nobody really talks to or you know notices in 1961 at age 18 he joins the army he wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do after school but that was one thing that he was very interested in during his training he of course learns the use of firearms he also learns a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques he picks up the little skill of what is commonly referred to as the death chop. It's when you do this little chop to the neck that severs the larynx. It causes a very quick death by suffocation. Now, during this time in the army, he is also introduced to a little lifestyle of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And he ultimately ends up being discharged for failing drug tests and also lacking in his overall discipline. This was not trying to get up and work out. He wanted to stay in and partake in all of the substances. After his discharge, he becomes somewhat of a nomad, just wandering the Mediterranean, begging for money, begging for food, just anything you had that could help him out, except for, you know, maybe a job opportunity. Now, when the pandering wasn't really paying off, 
like he needed it to. He did accept some little small jobs here and there. He was a bricklayer for some time, went to work with his father. His father was in the candy selling business, so he went to work with him for some time, but he didn't really like that either. And then he found out that he could sell blood donations, and so he was always down to the clinic selling his little blood. Child, they say he sold blood over a thousand times. He becomes familiar with the whole sex work scene and tries his hand at being a pimp, but it does not quite work out for him. However, he is not ready to give up the lifestyle. He decides, in fact, that he is going to put the shoe on the other foot and sell his own little meat. And of all of the things that he has tried for money up until this point, this actually proves to be the most successful. It is hands down the most lucrative Thing he has done for money so far and he was very popular throughout the little red light district very well known and highly sought after for being well endowed and able to love you long time child he was mr stamina he also begins stealing and so he just had a lot going on on the occasions that he is arrested he fakes epileptic seizures and so they would take him down to a psychiatric hospital instead of taking him down to jail and then he would be released least fairly quickly from here the severity of his crimes they only escalate he goes from selling his little meat on the street to committing violent crimes his first one targeting a complete stranger on the beach january 21st 1964 a chef by the name of adolfo is taking a nice little break and nap on the beach just resting up from his long shift when manuel approaches him catches him completely off guard smashing his head with a stone he then checks him for valuables taking his id and a little watch his second victim is a 21 year old french student by the name of margaret on june 20th 1967 she is found inside of a farmhouse now the night before she had met a young man in a nightclub by the name of jules norton it was jules's idea for them to go and hang out alone inside of the abandoned farmhouse so they go there they're drinking and they are allegedly doing lsd as well child meanwhile unbeknownst to them now, Manuel has seen them go inside the farmhouse and he is watching them. Jules is all doped up and feeling all sexy inside and so he decides to try to make a move on Margaret but she was not interested. She didn't come here for that. She came here to party and so she turns him down which aggravates him. He leaves the farmhouse and leaves her there. As soon as Manuel sees him leaving, he takes this as his opportunity to enter the farmhouse. Finds her there under the influence and laying in one of the beds. He beats Margaret, assaults her, and then as she is trying to escape, stabs her in the back. But he is not done with his nasty ass. He is very much turned on by what he had done. And so he stays there for hours having relations with her lifeless body. Jules, meanwhile, realizes later down the line that he has lost his wallet. He is tracing his steps and he realizes he must have left it at the farmhouse. So he goes back there to look for it and he finds Margaret's body there and he is shaken at the scene. He is like, oh no, baby. But instead of calling for help or anything like that, he decides to flee the house because he is like, you know what? They may think that I did this to her. I don't want to be involved. I'm out. Unfortunately for him though, it's broad daylight now and the neighbors see him fleeing the home. Now he is very quickly identified and brought in for questioning. When they asked him where he was that night, he of course lies and he does not mention that he was ever at the farmhouse. And when they directly ask him if he was in fact there at any point in the night, he tells them no. It isn't until they tell him that they know for a fact that he was there, that people had seen him there that he confesses to being there, but then he says he of course had nothing to do with what happened to her. So at this point they're like, you know what this, you're a liar. You're a liar and if you'll lie, you will steal and if you steal, you'll kill. So how are we to trust anything that you are saying to us right now? This was not a good look for him at all. He is arrested for the crime, but ultimately after a year, they had to release him because they had no other evidence other than someone saying, yeah, that was him. None of the evidence matched up to him. So from there, the case is just unsolved. Well, look who it is. 
Here she is. And y'all don't talk about my baby's one ear being down. She said she got to keep one to the streets. Yes, I do. Don't you don't lick me, girl. This ain't that kind of video. She is so tiny. Like, look at her. She is just the smallest little thing. Now, because the block is hot, he leaves the area, travels to Madrid, and again, he becomes a little, you know, a little floater asking for money and donations. On July 20th of 1968, he approaches a farmer and asks him for food. When the farmer replies, no, get a job, he hits this man with that swift little death chop and tosses him into the river. Unfortunately, this crime is seen as an accident and they don't feel like there's any foul play involved. And so it is not further investigated. At this time, Manuel is not just begging for money. He is still selling his meat on the streets, okay? He has a very well-known businessman as one of his regular clients. And one day, Manuel decides that he wants to try to, you know, leverage the man's little bit of celebrity and ask him for more money. The man tells him, oh no, I'm not paying you that amount of money. I don't care. On April 5th, 1969, he is found dead inside of his own shop. Manuel had inserted some kind of like, it was described as a bandage inside of the guy's butt and it was soaked in his baby batter. This is found while performing the autopsy and the DNA comes up as a match to Manuel. But due to the prestige of the family, they decide not to pursue this at all because they were too ashamed of what would be exposed if they had done so. Like imagine you not even want to pursue justice for your loved one because they were involved in, you know, all of the things. Now that he is down a client, he wants to add to his clientele. And so he approaches this 68 year old lady. I don't know if he thought this was going to be desperate or what, but he proposes that in exchange for money, he regularly comes by and satisfies her. But she is like, if you don't gone on somewhere, like she was not with any of the things. And she reportedly very rudely let him know, like, no ma'am or no sir this pisses him off and so he takes a break hits the poor lady over the head and tosses her into a ditch yes i have washed my hands since i picked up bella i know somebody is wondering like girl are you touching your face no ma'am you know my skin has been looking really nice lately and i want to keep it that way you know, granted, Bella is clean. Don't do my girl. She ain't no dirty body baby. Now, he does not just toss her over into this ditch. Once he does so, he goes down into the ditch, drags her into a tunnel there. And y'all know at this point what the sight of lifeless bodies does to him in his nether regions. He is very turned on by all of this. And while choking her, has relations with her body. He then hides her underneath a piece of plastic and leaves her there. But even that is not the end. He returns for the next three nights in a row to have relations with her. I'm disgusted. On the fourth day, she is found by children playing in the tunnel and reported to the police. He returns on that fourth night to engage with her yet again, but she is gone. And because they did not expect for him to be coming back nightly doing this or just coming back nightly, he is not caught. He just goes there, sees she's gone and knows like, okay, yeah, she's been discovered and people are probably looking for me. So let me just get out of here. He goes back to his father, asks him for a job yet again. The father gives him an opportunity to work with him at his candy business. He works with his dad for a little bit, pretending to be a normal, you know, productive member of society. And he befriends a young male student by the name of Francisco Ramirez. The two are hanging out frequently. And according to Manuel's version of the story, the young boy was attracted to him but he wasn't attracted to the young man and on december 3rd 1970 the two of them go out on a little motorcycle ride and the young man tries to grope him and so he tries to administer that little you know little little neck chop to him but to Manuel's surprise he regains his consciousness and when he does he then again attempts to make move make a pass at him 
And at that point, Manuel chokes him out and throws him into the river. Days later, he becomes acquainted with a very attractive young lady by the name of Antonia Rodriguez. Now, Antonia is into the same business he is into. And she is very well known for soliciting to the truckers in the area. That was her little district where she made the most of her money. Antonia and Manuel, they begin spending a lot of time together. He really likes her and he, he understands the lifestyle because he is in it. And she doesn't mind that he is in the business either. They are very accepting of each other. They make it official and they are seen all around town spending all of their time together. Just a little old power couple, if you will. Beyonce and Jay-Z of the street. I don't know if it was because of their line of work that they were not into the regular stuff because when they got together and did their little, you know, sexy thing, they liked to like fight with it. There was a lot of violence involved and they are equally into it. Like this is not just one of them trying to satisfy the other. They're both very much into MMA style relations. One day, things get a little bit out of hand. You see, one thing that Manuel had never done was perform fellatio on Antonia. They are out in this field getting it in like two wild wildebeests, and she makes this request. He tells her, oh no, I'm not doing that. The thought of it alone just disgusts him. Like that is where he draws the line. Now she insults him. She tells him that he is not a man. If he can't do that, if he is disgusted by that, she begins berating him. And from there he gets physical with her because he's feeling insulted. His little ego is bruised. I told y'all they like to fight while they get it in. So at first she ain't even quite sure that this is a real, real fight. For all she knows, this is just the start of another round. But she realizes once he grabs her tights and begins strangling her with them that uh, this is not round four. This is something very much different. He leaves her there in the field and the same is with the 68 year old woman. He returns for the next couple of nights to engage in sexual activity with her body. Meanwhile, she and Francisco have both been reported missing. Now, when they go searching for him, it does not take them long to find him in the river, but I don't know what it is about the river child and over in Spain because yet again, they find him and automatically rule it as an accident. A lot of people came forward suggesting that they look into Manuel as a person of interest because Antonio was his girlfriend. A lot of people knew them as a couple. They were always seen around town together, but lately they had just been seeing him. And while everybody else was wondering where she was, he seemed to be unbothered by the fact that she was nowhere to be found. He wasn't asking any questions and he did not appear to miss her. When they pick him up, little did they know he was actually en route to visit her body yet again. So if they had just sat back and followed him to see where he was going, they would have been able to locate her as well. But they don't, of course. They pick him up, bring him in for questioning. He is denying knowing anything about her whereabouts. They try to subject him to very harsh interrogation and they are putting the pressure on, but he is not budging. He is constantly contradicting himself, tripping over his words. He's visibly nervous. And so they like, you know what? He knows something. When they ask him for an alibi, he presents a half of a movie ticket as an alibi saying, you know, oh no, on this night I was here. And they're like, girl, get that out of here. When the little half-eaten movie ticket don't work, he resorts to the only other thing that he knows to do. He tries to fake an epileptic seizure. And so they are required to at least entertain it and get him to the hospital, but they do not let up. For the next couple of days, they continue to put on the pressure and interrogate him, even though they don't see any signs of getting closer to a confession. And then finally, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just switches his whole demeanor and very coldly, with a lot of cockiness, confesses to not only the disappearance of Antonia, but all of the other crimes that he had committed as well, including the ones that have been written off as accidents. He claims to have taken over 50 lives over the course of the last seven years. 
Prince. Now, initially, they don't even believe him. They feel like he is just wanting to take credit. He wants to make himself look like this big bad killer. But when they began cross-referencing like the details that he was given with unresolved crimes, they very quickly realized that they were in fact dealing with a serial killer. There were 22 of them that they realized right away that what he told them matched the evidence related to the crime. They immediately lock him up and he has no lawyer. He confesses to everything and then some, but because they believed him to be mentally impaired, he is not sent to prison. Instead of given a trial, he is sent to permanent confinement in a specialized medical center. Now, according to the Spanish jurisdiction, somebody who suffers from a mental illness could not be imposed a penalty for such crimes. Instead, they're put in a mental facility and the evolution of their illness is monitored. They try to rehabilitate the person. And if the doctors and staff feel like, okay, yeah, they can be a productive member of society now, they then would present that to a judge. If the judge agrees, they'll be released out into society. It's not like a certain time frame. Now, at the time of his arrest, he was also diagnosed with having XYY syndrome, which is a genetic condition in which a male has an extra Y chromosome, and it typically does not have many symptoms at all. Typically, the guy will be a lot taller than average, have acne, and more often than not, a few learning, learning issues or delays. That's typically the extent of symptoms you see with that. However, they tried to say that that could possibly be the cause for his actions. It was disproven though that violent behavior is associated with XYY syndrome. So that had nothing to do with his actions. They are able to definitively tie him to seven crimes. Although he had confessed to over 26 the thing is, they did not have access to all of the forensic testing supplies and resources required to definitively link him and prove that he had any involvement in the others. They would have needed international police to collaborate with them on this. And I'm not sure if they couldn't get it or they just decided not to pursue it because it just would have taken too much. Whatever the case is, they don't. While he is confined inside of the institution, he don't stop his bad boy ways. He tries his best to strangle one of the aides. And he also tries to sexually assault one of the social workers. So even though he had the opportunity to get out, if he went in and showed some sort of sign of improvement, he went in there acting a fool. And so his chances of getting out were slim to none. During his stay, they subjected him to a lot of experimental treatment, a lot of electroshock therapies, a lot of straight jacketing, different chain devices, different pills. Like they were literally doing everything with this man. His condition, it got really bad. This made him a lot worse. It was the opposite of rehabilitation. The treatments were taking an obvious toll on him, both mentally and physically. During his stay at the hospital, he becomes acquainted with Jose Vega, AKA the old lady killer. The two of them become like besties. They were in there like Brennan and Dale, comparing notes, bragging to each other about their victims and their crimes committed, boasting about all of their criminal achievements, if you will. He showed no regrets for his crimes and he described them without any kind of emotion whatsoever. Now, unfortunately for him though, in February of 1996, he passes away from a heart-related complication that is believed to have been a result of all of the testing in all of the things that they had been doing to him while he was in the hospital. Child, but I don't think anybody feels bad for him. I think they just know that that might be the reason. And because that is the end of his sad, strange little life, that is the end of the story in this video. My little babies are so good. They have just been so quiet. Y'all might have saw Blue in the background a little bit. He may be making weird noises in some of the outtakes probably but i'm surprised that they let me sit here and film in peace especially little miss bella she gets riled up child and it's just like girl relax please anyway let me know your thoughts on this case what y'all think of little manuel like the video share with a friend don't forget to subscribe if you have not as always i appreciate you so much for spending your time with me and i look forward to seeing you in the next one peace they can really blue Lil Manuel also had a little stuttering problem, which I kind of like I be having over here, honestly. Every time I say the word stutter, 
my subconscious mind is in the background saying stuttering Stanley, stuttering Stanley. It's so annoying. And he also learns this. Learns this. Did I just say learns this? Oh my god. Which includes it. I cannot talk. Includes this. Jeez Louise. Now he got familiar. Familiar. I sound like Jocelyn. For feel. Girl, what you got a book in your nose down there? What you doing? It has been disproven that any kind of violent behavior is behavior. It has been dis it has been disproven though that violent behavior. Why do I keep saying behavior? As always, I appreciate you spending your what?